Landed in the very nicest place in the store. The buyer said to show you the ropes, and I will in a couple of minutes. So just don't worry about a thing. Where are they all? Where are they all? Oh, uh, you young woman, you. Me? Oh, dear. I just want you to look at these. Just look at these. Oh, isn't that precious? It's Cadwallader's birthday. I have them right here now, huh? Now, just look here. Oh, they're beautiful. Beautiful? I want to see the manager. I'm snug. I mean snagged. See there? Oh, dear, that's too bad. Our um, specialist has just stepped out. I'll get her for you. Well, you tell her it's an emergency. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear, why does everything have to happen to me? I wonder if you would speak to this customer. Well, of course I will. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Are you the manager? No, but I'd like but to... I want to see the manager. Oh, she's the one I was telling you about. She knows just about everything. Uh, that is about stocking. Well, hardly. But I certainly know a run in a nylon when I see one. You're awfully lucky, or smart, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Jones, Mrs. Cadwallader Jones. Mrs. Jones, yes. because you bought your stockings here. Well, now, what do you mean by that? Oh, it's simple. You see, well, it's too bad this had to happen, but, but nylon runs when the thread is broken. Nylon thread is stronger than silk of the same size, but it will break. In fact, any make a fine stocking damages easily. Well, I still don't see how I... How something could have caught and broken the thread? Well, Mrs. Jones, runs and snags and fine stockings just will happen sometimes. But perhaps you'd understand better if you were to see the way in which the fabric of a stocking is made up of thousands of loops, each connected to adjacent loops. When the thread is broken, the stocking runs like this. A snag, on the other hand, is caused by a thread being pulled but not broken. This pull thread caused the loops in the fabric to bunch up in an unsightly manner. Golly, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm awfully sorry this had happened to you, Mrs. Jones, but, but if you'd like, I can send the stocking to our repair department and have the run mended. It will only take a few days and will never show at all. Well, <laughs> perhaps just as you say, I was pretty clever. Now, perhaps you'd like to take some Berkshires along with you. Your costume is very smart, you know, and we have a new color that would fit in beautifully. Why, uh, yes. And I think perhaps two pairs would do. As I can't tell when you can turn a kick into cash. I hope I'll be that good someday. Oh, of course you will. There's just a few things to learn first, and they're not hard. 
As you've just seen, runs and snags can happen to any fine stocking. But our buyer here is clever and insists on having only the finest full-fashioned stockings. I'll tell you later just what that means. But right now, it's important to learn how to handle them. All fine stockings, such as these nylons, should be handled like babies. Hold them tenderly, like this, as though you were showing a customer a string of priceless pearls. Aren't they lovely? Just sheer beauty. Beauty is right, and so is sheer. And that means no rough edges that might damage the stocking. Then, when you're showing a stocking to a customer, don't run your hand up into it. Rather, suggest its preciousness by draping it over your hand, like this. So if a customer takes a stocking from you, she'll treat it the same way as you do. Exactly. They won't even damage your sample. There's a right and a wrong way, too, in folding a stocking. First, fold the foot. Then fold the leg, following the original creases. There. Need is a whole wardrobe packed in a small trunk without wrinkles, now, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is, but would well, you suppose I'll ever learn to do all these things? Ah, oh, you're doing fine. All you need is some practice. Now, one of the best ways to learn how to handle a stocking is to understand thoroughly how it is made. This double section at the top is the welt. These, of course, are the leg and the foot. Notice how the stocking is reinforced at the toe, sole, and heel. This is a full-fashioned stocking. You can see how it is shaped to fit the leg contour. That means flawless fit, better looks, and longer service. Here, wait a minute, and we'll see how the stocking is made. I have an unseamed stocking right here. A full-fashioned stocking is knit flat and is shaped as it is knit, in the same way that you would knit a sweater. See how the width of the rows of stitches decreases from the thigh here to the calf here to the instep. This sewing forms the stocking seam and helps to give that extra smart appearance to the leg. Didn't you mention something about Berkshire Nylon 51? Oh yes, 51 means a gauge, that is, Gauge is a unit of measurement used by hosiery manufacturers. To make 51 gauge hosiery, the needle bar on the knitting machine must contain 51 needles for each one and a half inches. Each movement of the needle bar, therefore, makes 51 loops in each inch and a half. Berkshire's regular line includes many 51 gauge stockings because exhaustive tests have proved to them that this is the most suitable and desirable gauge for both appearance and service. What's denier mean? Denier is a measuring term which indicates the weight and thickness of the thread. Berkshire Nylon 51s come in various denier. For example, 30 denier, as shown here, is used for all-purpose wear. Finer denier, which are shearer, are naturally used for afternoon and evening wear. What about stocking sizes? How do you tell what size a customer should have? That's a good question. Stocking sizes are related to shoe sizes. Most people know their size, but if they don't, you can refer to a table like this. However, you'll soon know the size without using the table. See? Here you have the shoe sizes and the corresponding stocking sizes. Be careful to sell the correct size for your customer. And are there different lengths, too? Oh, you bet there are. The customer's height and build, determine what length she should have. Berkshire stockings are furnished in three lengths, short, medium, and long. We call them tri-size. Oh, here comes another customer. Suppose you practice folding while I take care of it. Well, don't be afraid of them. Oh, but will I ever learn to do this right? Oh, of course you will. You'll get so used to it, you'll be putting them back as neatly as a jack-in-the-box. Unfold the stockings carefully. Oh, come here, you. Draw the stocking over the hand. Oh, no. 
No, never draw the stocking over the hand for fear of running or snagging. Instead, drape it over the hands like this to show Berkshire's lovely color and fine. Fold the foot first. No. Fold the foot first. Hmm, not bad. Now, fold the leg in the original creases. Well, fold. Ah, it worked. Well, now that you're acquainted with the department, and are almost ready to start selling. Maybe you'd like a vacation. Oh, no, I've just had a vacation. Oh, really? Yes, down in Washington. Just look at those cherry trees. Mmm, just look at that. <laughs> it's funny. You know, I've got some pictures myself of cherry trees. I visited the Berkshire Knitting Mills at Reading, Pennsylvania recently. See? Oh, you mean they call that a mill? No wonder they make such fine stockings in a place like that. They know their business, too. For instance, our guide told us all about what Berkshire Knitting Mills called quality control. Quality control. Why, that's our watchword. It's second nature with us here at the mill, and it explains why we turn out the finest stockings made. We don't just say quality control. We practice it every step of the way. You'll see what it is. This is a stocking knitting machine in operation, where 30 stockings are knit simultaneously. First, the top of the stocking, or welt, is knitted. This is made in a heavier fabric than the stocking. The fabric is then doubled back so that the double thickness of a heavier fabric gives the utmost strength to this part of the stocking. The loops on the welt bar hooks are transferred to the needles. The machine now starts on the leg knitting operation. Let's take a real close-up look at this and see exactly how the loop is formed. So that the loop formation can be plainly seen, we'll show the action with animated drawings. This is the thread carrier and the thread. These are the needles, 51 to each one and one half inches. 476 needles are used to knit the stocking on a needle bar 14 inches long. These are the sinkers and the dividers. Watch how the sinkers place the thread between alternate needles. Now the advancing dividers distribute the thread to the remaining needles. This is the presser edge. As the needle descends, it is closed against the presser edge. The loops are held by the knockover bits so that the thread can be drawn through the old loops to form a new row. The stocking on this machine is now at the point where the narrowing operation starts. As knitting progresses, the stocking is narrowed or fashioned by lessening the number of needles. This is how the narrowing process looks in slow motion and greatly magnified. These are the narrowing points, the needles, and the fabric. The narrowing points remove the fabric from the needles along the outer edges and transfer the loops inwardly, reducing the width of the fabric by two needles on each side. By this process, the desired shape and width is attained. The narrowing process is automatically controlled by this intricate mechanism, which acts as a mechanical brain. The 
stockings are inspected 27 times during the manufacturing process. This is the quality control which assures the buyer perfectly made hosiery. As the knitting machine completes the foot of the stocking, the narrowing process is also employed to produce the correct fit. Additional threads for reinforcing the sole and toe area are knitted into the foot. Now the stocking is ready for looping and is removed from the knitting machine and checked for correct length. Looping is the operation which closes the heel and toe of the stocking. This is the job done by the looping machine. See how beautifully the heel is finished. After looping comes the seaming operation, one of the most important operations in stocking manufacture, and one which requires skilled fingers and trained eyes. Much of the beauty of stockings lies in the perfection of the seam, so the seams on the stockings are narrow, straight, and perfect making even the loveliest legs look better. Only an experienced operator can handle a machine that runs with the speed of this seamer. And only an experienced operator can turn out the perfect seams with tiny, even, flat, strong stitches which characterize these stockings. Here also, the inspector is constantly on the watch to see that the seeming standards of perfection are maintained. Next, the stockings go to the inspection department. The tint of the stockings distinguishes various types and lots of yarn. The stocking is turned so the right side is out as it is put on this compressed air operated expansion pole where it is carefully inspected for imperfections. Notice how the stocking is expanded and how the heel is pushed out for inspection. Any irregularities are exposed to the operator. The careful examination must reveal a clear elastic fabric, skillful knitting with even loops and strong reinforcements at each wear point. One of the most important parts of quality control is the testing department, where thread, Partly finished and finished stockings are subjected to many kinds of tests. Here, a friction test is being made to determine stocking wear. The Mullen tester is used to check the strength of the fabric. Pressure is applied gradually to the fabric, and at the bursting point, the pressure is automatically recorded. The testing laboratory checks stockings made by each section of every knitting machine to make sure that the loop construction is uniform and the correct number of courses per inch are being knit. If variations from the correct number of courses per inch are found, the machine is immediately adjusted. Strength of the yarn used is determined by this tensile strength machine. Many other tests are made so that finest quality will always be maintained. Isn't it interesting to know that the stockings are tested and inspected so carefully? Yes. Good stockings are made with care. Quality control really means something at Berkshire. Because of the nature of nylon, it is necessary that the fabric undergo a treatment known as pre-boarding. Under automatically controlled steam pressure, the fabric is permanently set, assuring its wrinkle-free appearance after each laundering. Next comes the dyeing. The large and modernly equipped dye department is located on the top floor of one of the buildings where the employees have the benefit of unlimited space, light, and ventilation. 
Here, chemists are engaged in research work for improving methods of manufacturing, dyeing, and finishing. All dyes, soaps, oils, and chemicals are tested in this department. Another instance of quality control. The dyes are carefully weighed in the proper proportions to produce the desired clear tones prescribed by color stylists. It's hard to realize that this oddly assorted mixture of dyes will produce the most popular stocking color of the season. But that is the magic that dye chemistry works. To prevent injury to the delicate fabric, the stockings are placed in special dye nets before going into the revolving dyeing machines. The tray of dyes is dissolved in warm water and this solution poured into the machine. Dyeing time and temperature are automatically controlled and the dyeing process is soon finished. After dyeing, the excess moisture in the stockings is removed in this extractor. This is the boarding process. After placing stockings on the forms, the drying is completed in the boarding machine. The stockings are matched, paired, and given their final inspection. Smooth glass top tables are used here so as to eliminate the possibility of stocking damage. Then the brand name and other information is stamped on the stockings. Here they are being packaged, ready for shipment to stocking counters in all parts of the world. Of course, we've only had time for the highlights of stocking manufacture, but, but you'll see more later for yourself. Oh, that'll be swell. You know, it ought to make it even easier to sell those beautiful stockings, too. So? Why, yes. How would you like to try a little selling this afternoon? Oh, and can I pick my own customer? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take him. Oh, you would. <laughs> well, I should know more about stockings than he does. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, how do you do? Um, I, I want some stockings. Oh, well, can you tell me the size? Why, uh, what's your, oh, yes, 17 and... 17? Uh, 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 is she large? Oh, no, no, she's just about, uh, uh, just right. <laughs> well, suppose you tell me... She's, just... uh, I... <laughs> I... I see. Uh, well, now, that 17, as you will see, is probably part of her house number or something. Um, let's just try her shoe size, for size. Six pairs. Now that will be just. Need any help? Hmm. I'll say you don't. <laughs> what gauge are these stockings? These are 51 gauge, 30 denier. These are most satisfactory for all purpose wear. Isn't this a beautiful stocking? Oh, it certainly is, and such a beautiful color. <laughs> you know, some of the nylons I've had never seem to fit right. What size should I take? Size is very important. All Berkshire stockings are full-fashioned, which means that they are made to fit flawlessly. In addition to the foot size, they're also made in short, medium, and long length. Oh, what size shoe do you wear? I wear a five and a half double A shoe. And you should wear nine stockings. For your height and build, and you wear a long girdle? Yes. Then I would suggest a short length. These stockings in nine short will give you a perfect fit and lasting loveliness. And this is our newest color. Would you like two pairs? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm so glad to see that you have Berkshire stockings. That's my brand. <laughs> I'd like something serviceable for my new tweed. Well, I think you'll like our new nylons. These are the sheer can't-run nylons, which are run-resistant. And like all Berkshire stockings, full-fashioned for flawless fit. They're beautiful and look so sheer. And I think that color is just what I want. 
But you say run resistant? Oh, yes. Nihilace is knit with a lock stitch, run resistant loop, which means extra strength and also added sheerness. They're the lovely stockings that last longer. They're just fine. With these and my new suit, I'll be walking on air. Stockings like this just do something for a woman. Now, while I'm here, I'd like some Berkshire 51s, too. I know all about them. Better give me two pairs of both, the Nihilate and the 51s, in your very finest denier. <laughs> what size, please? And you wear the long stocking, don't you? Yes, long, in size 10. It's been a busy afternoon. I've had all kinds of customers. It's been a grand experience for you. Yes, it has. I've learned a lot, too. <laughs> you know, I had no idea how wonderful Berkshire stockings are. Yes, Berkshire stockings are wonderful for many reasons. They are made in a modern daylight factory by experienced, skilled workers. Careful inspection at all stages of manufacture provides an unequaled quality control of the product. The stockings are full fashioned for flawless fit and furnished in short, medium, and long lengths to fit all types of legs. The stockings are dyed in the correct colors selected by stylists to complement the season's shades in shoes and clothes. Berkshire stockings are lastingly lovely. Sheer, sheer beauty for legs that go walking, legs that go shopping, legs that go traveling, legs that go dancing. All encased in the sheer beauty that is Berkshire. Berkshire stockings for the loveliest legs in the world. Thank you.